So it can sometimes seem like there's been no good wins for the left over the past couple weeks. Well, I want to give you guys a little glimmer of hope here. We just saw this here. JP Morgan Chase is bowing to left-wing activist pressure. It is going to be removing Lee Raymond, a noted climate change denier and former Exxon oil boss from his role as independent director. Now, this is actually really good, really big news because in his role as, uh, as independent director, he was really influential in making sure that oil companies always get their money when they ask for it, when they need it, when they want it, and also making sure that JP Morgan Chase doesn't do any kind of long-term or serious investment into green energy or green technology. And also, by the way, uh, background on him, during his tenure at Exxon, he was really influential in making sure that Exxon put out false information about climate change and also paying scientists to put out either false or misleading uh, misleading studies when it came to climate change to you know sort of obscure the possibility of regulation. So that's who this guy is. That's who Lee Raymond is. Lee Raymond is. And a lot of left-wing activists have for a long time targeted him to try to get get him out of power. And the major group which really got together more recently, actually really only starting in February, um, a little bit stuff before that in sort of November, but really, you know, putting the pressure on in February is this group known as Majority Action. Now, I should say there's actually a lot of criticism from uh, various kind of lefties of Majority Action. And the reason for that is because the way in which they leverage their influence is through shareholders. So what they do is they get together um, various kind of shareholder groups and, you know, inform shareholders what they can do in order to, you know, the various votes that they can engage in, in order to, you know, leverage things on various kind of focus issues, such as net zero emissions, tech accountability, gun safety, banking, etc. They have a few other kind of issues that they're really concerned about. And they basically leverage capitalism, uh, leverage their shareholder stuff like that in order to, you know, bring about various kinds of change. And as you imagine, there are lefties who are critical of that saying that, well, you're still engaging in capitalism, et cetera. So, you know, that's particularly bad. My opinion on it, honestly, is that look, they're doing, they actually have done some substantial good stuff in the short run and the medium run. Do I think in the long run, we need to reform corporations if we actually want to get these policies done in the long run? Yes, absolutely. I think that this is, this kind of activism is important and it's influential, but it, we, we should, we also should be realistic and understand that it's really, Really only going to work for the short run if we really want to solve the issue of climate change. But I'm not also not going to sit here and complain when they come out and you know get wins like this one here. Um, so uh, this is sort of the statement that they put out on this they had here. Thank you so much for the leadership of, uh, basically these are the different groups which they were able to get together um, in order to do this, who all committed to vote against Raymond's re-election as well as the support of tens of thousands of climate activists. J.P. Morgan Chase has been forced to change its leadership structure. Shareholders have demanded that J.P. Morgan Chase be held accountable for its failure to address the systemic risk in, uh, presented by climate change, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see here just a general statement, you know, saying good job, we did it. Now, to be particularly clear here, it isn't a complete win because what they did is they got Raymond demoted from his role as independent director, but he does still have a seat on the board. So it's not a complete role. And majority action is saying that they're going to be continuing the pressure until he's off the board entirely. So that's also good news here. Also, by the way, a little bit other information about them, just so you can kind of get this. Uh, I actually saw this maybe like a week, week and a half ago, uh, but they actually put out this report here, or at least publicized this report here, talking about how Dominion, which is really relevant to me living in Virginia, because Dominion, if you don't know, has a near monopoly of energy production in the state of Virginia. Um, and basically talking about how Dominion and a few other power companies are basically not anywhere near uh, uh, near where they need to be in order to reach their goal of net zero emissions by 2050. Um, they're basically pushing out double the amount of carbon that they would need to if they want to actually reach their goal. So that's actually really relevant and important information for me as a voter in the state of Virginia, uh, you know, so I can vote for the various representatives to, you know, know that or inform my representatives, et cetera, et cetera. So I actually do generally like majority action. I think that they do good work for the short and maybe the medium run, but I am in agreement with lefties who say that, look, this kind of shareholder activism is useful maybe, um, but but they're critical of it in the long run. I think that, you know, in the long run, we do have to talk about completely restructuring and reformulating companies and the way that they run um, so that they're more democratically organized and have, you know, have controls to make sure that the uh, uh, concerns of of environmental groups and you know the uh, communities who are going to be negatively impacted of a you know of a company moving in or the various factories and of you know climate emissions etc that those things are directly factored into the decisions of a corporation those kinds of structural reform to the nature of capitalism are absolutely going to have to be made in the long run if we want to have any chance of dealing with the threat of climate change um, um, and the like so 
Anyway, that's just sort of my opinion. Still happy with this, still happy. Let's celebrate a win when we get it, especially in times like now where it seems like we're not winning anywhere. It seems like everything that we see is just bad news, bad news, bad news. Well, uh, you know, a little bit of something to celebrate. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.